Kirk. As we begin to prepare our hearts and minds for worship, Lyndall will get us started with some uh, uh, prelude music. Here's Lyndall. Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. morning. A warm word of welcome to all of you this morning uh, on this uh, Lord's Day to the Kirk of Kansas City. We are delighted to be worshiping together both online and on site uh, today. If you are here with us in our sanctuary, please take a moment to find our ritual of friendship pads. These are on the edges of your pews. Help us fill them out, pass them back and forth among your pews. It's uh, a good way for us to catch the name of our neighbor so you can greet one another by name after the service. It also is helpful for us to receive joys and concerns, prayer requests that you have. Tear them out when you're done. Leave them in the offering plate as you exit the sanctuary today. We hope that all of you can join us for a bit of conversation and welcome after worship today. We'll have coffee hour today with light refreshments. Today, believe it or not, is National Ice Cream Day. Uh, So come celebrate with us after church. I look forward to greeting you all there. For those of you who are joining us online, a word of welcome to you as well. If you're new around here, I'm Chad Herring. I'm the pastor of the Kirk. We are a Christian community seeking to follow God on the way of Jesus Christ and part of the Presbyterian Church USA. We aspire to be guided by an inclusive theology, a welcoming spirit, and a commitment to seeking after peace and justice in the world. You can learn more about our church at our website, kckirk.org. Look for us on social media for the Kirk of KC. Our contact information is there on the screen. And our motto is community-minded, loving, and serving. Help us build community online by using our chat rooms on Zoom or on Facebook. Let us know that you're here, what's going on in your neck of the woods. The chat room is particularly helpful uh, if you are uh, joining us uh, live, so you can share your prayer requests. We'll gather those together and uh, combine them with our community prayers a little bit later in our service today. Say hi to Mitch while you're there. She can help answer questions about our community. We do have just a couple of announcements today. We are uh, reminding everyone, uh, our members particularly, to gather your name tags and to wear them for the great name tag roundup of 2022. Uh, Kathy Cole, our elder for evangelism and our new Kirk welcome team, they're thanking hospitality, how we can be the most welcoming Kirk that we can be. So help us focus this month by wearing your name tags every Sunday. If you need help with your name tag, contact the church office and let us know. We'll be glad to help you out. Uh, Just a couple of other announcements. Uh, As all of you know, Johnson County and Jackson County community levels, CDC community levels are both in the red or the high category, uh, which means that unfortunately we are requiring masks on Sunday morning. Uh, until both counties drop back down to green. We thank you for your help with that task uh, while you are here this morning, and all of us are hopeful that we can be back to those lower COVID levels very soon. 
And finally, if you are interested in signing up to help out on Sunday morning, either to be a liturgist like Don is today, or a greeter, or to help with our uh, fellowship time, there's a sign-up sheet by the office door. Please uh, take a look at it, fill it out, and help us with those tasks uh, on Sunday mornings. Now that we are done with these announcements, let's be back uh, about the work of the people of God. Let's set, us, let's set about worshiping God together. Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite all who wish to stand with me. Let's stand as we call ourselves to worship by praying responsibly the words on the screens and in your bulletins. Let's all pray together. In the wilderness, water brings life. Seek us out, O God, and take us to the water. In the word of God, the good news gives light. Seek us out, O God, and fill us with understanding. In the bread and the cup, the body of our Savior nourishes everyone. Seek us out, O God, that all may be fed. Here is the water of life, the word that feeds, the food of eternity. Come and praise the vine that gives all goodness. Come, let us worship God together. Amen, amen, amen. Our first hymn this morning is Be Thou My Vision, number 450. I invite all of you to join me in that hymn today. Our liturgist this morning is Don Clardy. Don will greet us and will lead us all in our prayer of confession, reflection, and renewal. Good morning, Kerr. Good morning. Uh, I look back over the years, and I think I was one of the first to be able to be a liturgist with Chad. Mm -hmm. And my plan was to be the last in two weeks. But I'll be off in the Canadian Rockies, and I won't do that. <laughs> I, I encourage you to serve as liturgist. Chad always makes it easy. Um, today it's not easy, but, but join me in the prayer of confession, reflection, and renewal. Eternal God, author of our life and end of our pilgrimage, guide us by your word and spirit past every peril and temptation so that you may not wander from your way nor stumble in the darkness. Help us finish our journey safely and come to celebrate eternal rest in you. When we fail to love our neighbor, turn a blind eye to injustice, or fail to trust in your love, forgive us and redirect us. Help us learn from our missteps and seek pardon for our mistakes, so that we might trust in your never-ending love 
and we pray in, in the name, name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Assurance of God's grace. People of God, believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Christ, Christ, we are all forgiven. Please be seated. So I'm going to invite our clerk of session, Cheryl Kaimig, and also Skylar Smith, who is doing double duty. She's working our slides today to come on forward and join me as we prepare ourselves for this order of baptism. And that to you. Thank you. Friends, the gospel tells us that Jesus said go, said, go therefore to all the nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. I will be with you always to the end of time. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer servant or free. There is no longer male and female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. In baptism, God claims us, God seals us, showing that we belong to God and will always be welcomed by God. Inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of our acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and the seal of our participation in God's forgiveness, and the beginning of growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. Baptism is both the act of a community and for a particular individual, surrounded by the grace and the love of God. Today, thanks be to God, we will ce celebrate four separate baptisms for four wonderful children of God, welcoming each individually with the love of this community of faith, a belonging that goes beyond this church to all churches in God's realm. My friends, on behalf of the session, it is with great joy that I present Ellen Rose Gilmore, Olivia Grace Nielsen, Maeve Amelia Kemp, and Wesley Thomas Kemp to receive the sacrament of baptism. Thank you. I, uh, I didn't think entirely through, so I will need you to help her get the slides on the screen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> now you can continue. Would all of you, the congregation and friends of the clerk, please join me as together we speak our baptismal covenant using the words on the screen. Let's get it up on the first. There we go. Great. In this, In this act, act of amazing, amazing grace, we witness to the power of God. We celebrate God's abundant love, mercy, and initiative to invite each of us to share in the community of faith and the joy of God's presence. Olivia and Evelyn, Maeve and Wesley, we promise to care for you by our acts and our way of life. We will work to teach you the joy of God's world. We will do our best to enable you to decide about the Christian faith. As the people of God in this place, we welcome you to our common journey, trusting God, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Amen. Friends, as we celebrate the sacrament of baptism this morning, let each of us remember our own baptisms and the welcome God gives each and every one of us. Please pray with me. You can stay up here for a second. Bless by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this water that Olivia and Evelyn, Maeve and Wesley, being buried with Christ in baptism, may rise with him to newness of life. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world without end. Amen. For you, Olivia, for you, Evelyn, there you are, for you, Maeve, and for you, Wesley, for you, Jesus Christ came into the world, for you, he lived and showed God's love, for you, he suffered the darkness of Calvary and cried at the last, it is finished, for you, he accomplished, uh, he triumphed over death and rose to newness of life, for you, he ascended to reign at God's right hand, all this he did for you, 
before you knew anything of it. And so the word of Scripture is fulfilled. We love because God loved us first. I'm going to invite now James and Molly Jo Nielsen and Olivia Grace Nielsen to come on forward. Hi, Olivia. Are you ready? Come on over here. <laughs> We're just going to stand around here, okay? You want to touch it? See how it feels? You want to feel it? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Feels good? Okay. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. James and Molly Joe. here are some questions for you. Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples and to follow in the way of the Savior? Do you? Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to grow with Olivia in the Christian faith and to help her be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating God's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in the world, and by offering her the nurture of the church? Do you? Yes, I do. do you desire to have Olivia baptized in the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Are you ready? And what is the name of your daughter? Olivia Grace Nielsen. Ready? Come on up a little closer. Okay, Olivia Grace Nielsen, daughter of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let's go walk around, okay? Remember how we did this before? Yeah, hold my hand. Mine too, okay. All right, welcome our newest daughter of the church, of the faith, of our family, Olivia Grace Nielsen. What a wonderful, yes, you can applaud, that's good. What a wonderful joy this is. What a wonderful celebration it is. We're grateful that wherever Olivia goes, she will find a family of faith that will nurture her and accept her and care for her just as she is because that's what God does. And we do what God asks us to do in creating a family of faith where all are welcome and all are loved. Friends, welcome to your newest daughter of the faith, Olivia Grace. Amen. I also have this for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Aaron and Stephen and Maeve and Wesley, come on up. Maeve, you're getting so big. Oh, so big. Hi, friends. Gosh, it's so good to see you. Hi. Do you want to touch it too? Do you want to see what it feels like? Yeah. Yeah. You can put it on your head a little bit. Feel good? I messed up my hair now, but that's okay. Okay. Uh, Aaron and Stephen, here are some questions for you. Aaron and Stephen, do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples and to grow in the way of our Savior? Do you? Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to grow with Maeve and Wesley in the Christian faith, help them be faithful members of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating God's presence, furthering the mission of Christ in the world, offering them the nurture of the church? Do you? Yes, I do. do you desire to have Maeve and Wesley baptized in the family and faith of Jesus Christ? Yes, okay. Maeve, you want to go first? Maybe? Okay. You want to go down? You want to stand up? That's okay. You can do that too. Maeve? Yeah, up, up, up. And what is the name of your child? Maeve Amelia Kemp. Can you hold my, touch my hand? Okay. That's okay. Maeve Amelia Kemp, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Just a little more. And of the Son. Yeah, I know. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you. Do we want to do both maybe right now and then we'll just walk through once? Okay. And what is the name of your son? Wesley Thomas. And, and, and asleep, bless him. Wesley for now, right? <laughs> Wesley Thomas Kemp, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, let's walk around, shall we? Friends, <laughs> two of your newest siblings of the faith. This is Amelia, I'm sorry, Maeve Amelia and Wesley Thomas children of the covenant 
our new beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. Wherever they go, they will find a welcome because of the loving grace and witness of our God. They will be able to express themselves fully as they are because God loves them as they are. They will be able to contribute to God's world with imagination and intelligence and wisdom and probably incredible musical ability. <laughs> and they will be able to share God's love and God's grace. And we are so grateful for that. Friends, Amelia, um, Maeve Amelia and Wesley Thomas. Welcome, friends. And I'm gonna, you go ahead, I, you, your hands are full. I'll just carry this back here and give this to a parent. All right, they're right there, all right? Okay, great. And John and Aaron and Evelyn, come on forward. Hi, Evelyn. Hi, Did, have you been watching all of this? Have you been wondering what's going on? Hi, hi, John, hi. All right. Friends, I have questions for you as well. Aaron and John, do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples and to follow in the way of our Savior, do you? Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to grow with Evelyn in the Christian faith, to help her be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating God's presence, furthering Christ's mission in the world, and offering her the nurture of the church? Do you? Do you desire to have Evelyn baptized in the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Hi, Evelyn. And what is the name of your daughter? Evelyn Rose Gilmore. Evelyn Rose Gilmore, daughter of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Do you want to be carried or do you want me to carry you? Do you want to go with me? All right. Thank you. All right. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to carry a kid or not. We'll see how far I get, right? All right. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. Look at all them. Friends, this is your newest daughter of the faith, uh, Evelyn Rose Gilmore. Isn't she adorable? Evelyn will be able to go anywhere in the world to a community of faith like this one and will be welcomed and loved and cherished just as she is because God welcomes us and loves us just as we are. She will be able to share with that community her gifts and her, uh, her abilities. She will be able to be loved and to love and so share in the community of faith. What a wonderful joy it is to welcome our newest child of the faith here at the church, Evelyn Rose Gilmore. Welcome. Yay. You did it. All right. Thank you all. And that's for you. Thank you. Okay. Friends, let's pray together. Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy by giving us the gift of Jesus the Christ. Bless these wonderful children today, Olivia, Maeve, Wesley, and Evelyn. May they be filled with their joy, with joy at the welcome you show them. May they never be ashamed to confess their faith in you. Help them to know that they are set free to love because you love them their whole lives long. Bless these wonderful parents, James and Molly Jo, Aaron and Stephen, Aaron and John. May they show their children the same love that you have showed them and show us through their love and care for them. Bless this gathering of your faithful people. Unite us all in the peace of Christ and the company of the Holy Spirit. And may all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Friends, we welcome you, members and friends of the Kirk, as we seek to be the people of God in this place, loving and serving the community that God gives us. The peace of God be with you now and always. Amen. Please join me as we sing together our response, verse 3 of Baptizing Water. It'll be up on the screens.
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Let's listen together. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him, welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The word of God. Thank Thanks you. be to God. striving so my love profess but not be Spirit's come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed by this we worship and are freed. Amen, 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 amen. Gosh, Ethan, thank you for that. That was beautiful. And thank you, Linda, for accompaniment. And Lyndall, um, great musical uh, offering today. Uh, our second reading uh, this morning is an ancient story. It is found in the 18th chapter of Genesis. We're going to read together the first 15 ver verses. I invite you to open your hearts and your minds as we listen together for God's word to us this morning. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up, and he saw three men standing near him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Let me bring a little bread so that you might refresh yourselves. And after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. 
And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd, and he took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared, and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now, now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, right? It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. And may God bless to us our reading and our understanding and our applying of this word to how we live our lives. Amen. Uh, Alan Gregory likes to say that this story occurs at the time of day when the mad dogs come out to play, whatever that means. Um, When the columns of heat shimmer, right? When the landscape blurs and you can fry eggs on the rocks. It says, he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. This is one of those stories that invites us to think a little bit about perspective, right? Because you, the reader, know something that they, the characters, don't. Yahweh the Lord appears to Abraham uh, there in the Oki Grove, but Abraham doesn't know that yet. I mean, there Abraham is under his awning, expecting nothing that day. Maybe he's sitting there half asleep, right? Calm and quiet and snoozy, not much going on, when he looks up to see three strangers. So much for a calm and quiet and lazy afternoon, because with their arrival, there is unleashed this flurry of activity. And for the next, oh, seven verses or so, 99-year-old Abraham is on the go. Greeting, foot washing, bread making, meat preparation, service. The narrator works to emphasize the haste of it all, right? Everything moves along briskly. Maybe the point is that no one should possibly be left in this broiling sun one minute longer than necessary. So Abraham, what? He runs to greet them. Abraham hastens off to Sarah, asks her to bake those cakes quickly, right? Heads off to the flock and orders a servant to hasten the calf's preparation. All that flurry of activity, right? The strangers served, Abraham and Sarah and the servants still, once again, with Abraham there standing at post, ready to help with anything else the strangers, they're now guests, might need. All of this is a brilliantly economical and vivid description of the mechanics of hospitality in the ancient world. I mean, to start with, Abraham is ungrudging. Did you hear that? He didn't grumble. He's not annoyed. At least it doesn't appear to us that he is. Uh, All that speed supports this reading, uh, as does maybe this overly polite language that he adopts. Did you hear that? If I have found favor, let me bring you water. Allow me to bake you a little bit of bread. And the host welcomes the stranger as a gift, as as an honor. There is no quid pro quo here, no eye for advantage. We are a million miles from the dynamic of market exchange. Abraham just seeks to serve these strangers. And you might wonder if this is a sign of Abraham's lower social standing. You know, that that he might be obligated to care for noble or powerful or wealthy visitors. No, that doesn't fit. Abraham is one growing into a fairly wealthy community member himself, replete with servants, right? And calves in that posh tent of his parked by that prime spot by the Oaks of Mamre. There is no sense here that Abraham is required to do any of this. Indeed, that seems to be part of the point. Abraham's generosity, even to excess. I mean, this unexpected meal produces a veritable pile of bread, a whole calf, far more than three people could eat and still possibly move, 
You've had those meals, right? And I'm guessing that there was dessert and coffee offered after they were through. Maybe ice cream on this National Ice Cream Day. Yes, there was ice cream. I'm willing to bet on it. I mean, the amount of it all, the, the, the quantity of it, right, isn't the point, honestly. I mean, a good host doesn't make the guest feel the excess, which is why he refers to it all as a little bread, a, a little water, an understatement, right? Given that everybody knows he's not going to go back there and return with half a baguette to give to the three of them. Abraham is denying that any of this is a burden. And they can't see at all whether his pantry is large or small. They don't watch him dashing about, servants falling over each other to, to, to meet his order for a hasty but tasty meal. All that they see from their perspective, is an ungrudging gift pointing away from Abraham all that work and expense and energy, not to mention that of Sarah, who probably laughed at this request also. She's apparently in a laughing mood these days. All that work pointing away from Abraham to the visitors as a source of their delight. They are guests. Their comfort makes him happy. It is a good day. There is this great verse in the letter to the Hebrews. You might know it. It invites people not to neglect showing hospitality to strangers. For, as Hebrews says, by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. And one gets the feeling that the author of that letter was thinking here about this passage, this delightful story in Genesis. Abraham didn't know what we know, that the Lord is visiting him that day. He lifts up his eyes. That's how the text put it. He lifts up his eyes. The same language used in Isaiah where one lifts one eyes, one's eyes up to the hills, asking from whence their help shall come. My help comes in the Lord who made heaven and earth. Later, Jesus would harness this impulse of hospitality to spark something within his followers about looking up, seeing a need, and rushing to meet it. Not because the one served can somehow repay you for it, but because you might delight in the welfare for the one you serve seeing how they are well, and when that makes you well. He does this even if when Mary and Martha are there in that room, Mary going beyond hospitality to devotion, sitting there at Jesus' feet. Devotion, we all know, will lead to service, to care for the needs of others. In our story, these three guests are there to add an exclamation point, honestly, to a conversation that Abraham has with God three chapters earlier. Abraham doesn't know that yet, but we find out that uh, after all this activity, they ask about his wife, about, uh, about her by name, if you caught that, about Sarah. Where is she? Oh, she's, she's out in the tent. Well, Sarah will bear a son in due season. Won't that be delightful? And breaking in on the scene in the distance, Sarah thinks that's hilarious. I mean, she laughs and she laughs and she laughs and she laughs. She's too old. There's this silly euphemism, it has ceased to be with Sarah among the manner of women. Goodness, funniest thing I've heard in a long, long time. And you have to wonder if Abraham ever told her about that conversation with God, again, three chapters earlier from our story. Well, he was called Abram back then. Sarah had a different name too. She was Sarai. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid. You have no offspring now, but you will. Look toward heaven. Count the stars. You guys know this story? If you are able to count them, so shall your descendants be. And Abram believed it, says Genesis. It was reckoned to him as righteousness, a kind of sign that this was a pact made between them, you see. Then there's the whole episode, if we can call it that. Um, of the, uh, there's that whole episode, if we can call it that. Then there's the story of Hagar and Ishmael. And then there's the covenant with Abraham, Abram and Sarai, once more made concrete, confirmed, if you will, with this couple renamed Abraham, his new name, meaning ancestor of a multitude. And then there's this bit of a break, right? Some time passing. Things quiet and slow down. And snoozy, leading to this one afternoon where three strangers come strolling by. And the Lord appears to Abraham and Sarah once more. You might have heard this week about the Webb Telescope. Have you heard about it? The James Webb Space Telescope. It's now the largest optical telescope in space. It was launched just this past December, Christmas Day, incidentally, vastly improving our ability to see into the universe with enhanced sensitivity and infrared resolution, allowing us to see incredible detail 
objects way too old or faint or distant for the Hubble Space Telescope. The first images were released this week. Could we show that slide, please? Let's see if we can get that up on the screen. We're gonna try there. It's not a, it's, I wish I could zoom in, but then you'd lose kind of some of it. Um, honestly, this picture is incredible. I was watching one summary of the images and they showed the original frame as we once saw it through the Hubble telescope and you could make out a couple of stars, right? Several objects, maybe 10 or 12 specks in this section of sky we were looking at. And then they showed the same shot seen from the Webb telescope. And not only could you see those 10 or 12 specks, but hundreds more, not just stars, galaxies, nebulas, solar systems swirling around a sun and you sit there and you take it in and maybe you have to remind yourself to breathe. I mean, we knew that our universe was so vast, infinite, they taught us, as much as we could comprehend that. And with these pictures, we realized just how impoverished our imagination about all that actually has been, right? Okay, you can take down the slide now, thank you. All of this has forever changed a lot about how I think about things, including, among other things, how I think about this story in Genesis. Hey, Abram, look up. Look at the stars. Count them if you can. So now there's another way in which Abram has a different perspective than the audience does, than we do. We have a benefit of pictures that boggle the mind. Abram looks up and sees a starry sky and thought that this was a crazy enough adventure. So sure, let's give it a try, if he only knew. And Sarah is right. I mean, it is laughable, right? This promise, this encounter. Because a universe with stars too many to count, too many to explain, too vast to comprehend. In that universe, right, Yahweh's messengers deign to spend time on a hillside enjoying grilled food and choice cakes, and Abraham's heart sings with joy. What do we make about these things? What do we make of, of happiness, of, of service, of, of gratitude, of selflessness, of loving one another? I mean, far better than the alternative, sure, but, but even in the grand scheme of things, what could these feelings of ours, these experiences of ours possibly matter when there are a kajillion solar systems out there? What does it matter if the name is Sarah or Sarai, Abram or Abraham? Who cares about the narrative flourishes added by an author who sat down 3,000 years ago with a quill and some animal hide to carefully and beautifully draft a little story for us? And the simple answer is that it all matters. That detail, these experiences of ours, these moments and these individuals, they each matter, that God cares, and so we do. I mean, we care because we are living in this vast, incomprehensible world. We have quite enough to try to understand right here in front of us, in this world, thank you very much, in the part of the world that we see day to day. The people we have in this world matter. They matter to us and we to them. And even if there are other worlds spinning, we inhabit this one with all the energy and passion that we are able to muster. And we find in this life and in this world something just as big and deep and broad and high as this universe of ours. We call that the love of God. A love that calls us by name. A love that knows us individually. That gives us a seat at the table that washes over us with the waters of grace. That stands at attention waiting to see if we've had enough food to eat and anything else that we might need. It is so peculiar, this tension between the transcendent and the particular, isn't it? The vastness of the universe and the intimacy of our lives. Our faith helps us to see that this tension is woven into the fabric of what makes us, us. What helps us sense the very movement of God. What drives us to claim these values of compassion and service and hope. Because one particular couple made cakes for some visitors. Because one Nazarene carpenter broke bread and fish and fed a multitude. Because one assembled crowd felt the power of the Holy Spirit calling them into friendship and into community. Because one Kirk seeks to find its way into an ever more complicated and complex world. Sarah should not have been afraid to laugh. Life is funny sometimes. 
Humor is understanding which, that is tinged with hope and with imagination. The incongruity of it all somehow making sense to us. You matter because God says you do. And we give witness to that in baptism when we say the name of each person, child or adult, out loud as we claim the promises of the covenant for them. And remember the same for us. God loves you. Welcome, dear one, to the realm of God. It may be vast and daunting out there, but don't worry, we'll face it together, following God as we go. If you'll just permit me... (laughs) One little moment reminiscing about my childhood. There was this animated movie that came out in 1986 called An American Tale. You might remember it. It spawned all sorts of sequels and video games and such. The story of the immigrant mouse, Fievel Mouskowitz, getting lost from his family and seeking to be reunited from them. There's this song that I can't get out of my head that was from that movie, apparently. I won't sing, don't worry. Somewhere out there, Beneath the pale moonlight, someone's thinking of me and loving me tonight. And even though I know how very far apart we are, it helps to think we might be wishing on the same bright star. And when the night wind starts to sing some lonesome lullaby, it helps to think we're sleeping underneath the same big sky. I know you wanted me to sing, but I'm not going to do it. You guys remember that song? It was seared into my 11-year-old brain, it seems. And I found myself silently singing that song this week, looking at pictures of our universe, planning for delightful baptisms, reading these ancient and very particular stories, delighting in the way that even in the vastness of our lives, these stars can maybe bring us all together. Because they give us all something to look up to, something that we can share as different as we all are, something that we each are given as a gift. Maybe we can find the vastness of it all, right? The anchor that helps us find our place, our worth, our purpose, that very thing that keeps us connected. Those stars can do that. They are a sign of God's promise. What wonder? What joy. May we thank God for the welcome and the hospitality that God shows us. Just a little bit of water, just a little bit of bread, just a little welcome that makes all the difference in the world. And may that inspire us to find our place in God's world, beloved, belonging, grateful, and ready to serve others ourselves, just like Abraham and Sarah, our ancestors, did that one day so long ago. Friends, may it be so. Amen? Amen. Friends, our worship service always includes a moment of thanksgiving. 
This is our opportunity to, think no, to make note of God's many gifts in our lives, where we pledge ourselves to use these gifts at God, as God invites us to use them, namely, to make the world a better place for others, to reinvest them in other people, and for the common good. We're grateful, friends, for all that you do in your own communities and through this church to share God's love and God's compassion. If you are looking for a place to do that, we'd invite you to consider the Kirk as a place to join us in that work. We cannot do the work we do without your support, your energy, your compassion. Your financial gifts help enable our ministry and mission. If you're worshiping here on site, we have offering plates in the narthex for that purpose. You can also contact the church office to see how you can be involved in our common work. Both in your participation here among us and in your work through the wider world causes us to be grateful for your spirit of generosity, for all that you do to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. Please join with Don as he leads us all in our prayer of thanksgiving. Please join with me. Loving God, you invite us into a future filled with possibility and promise. We give you thanks for the blessings you have given to us, so that all people might be blessed through us. Take what we offer for your service and use it to magnify your love and to make your glory known to the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're gonna to turn to our community prayer. I'm gonna lift up some prayer concerns that are specific to this community. And if you're watching online, or if these people are new to you and you don't know them, that's okay. Just send your best thoughts along anyway. And if you are online, now is the best time to send you in your prayer requests through the chat rooms. We'll gather those together and offer them during our service this morning. Um, we begin our prayer today as we have for the next uh, couple of years for prayers on our ongoing struggle against COVID-19 particularly for those who have died, both the one million Americans here and the million more uh, overseas, those who continue to experience the lasting impacts of this disease. We pray for first responders, for all who work to build healthy communities. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray today also for this ongoing struggle against systemic racism as we seek to do our part to end racism in our lives and in our world. We ask that God will help us to be part of the solution as we claim the work of anti-racism as our very own, joining with others who follow Jesus Christ and everyone of goodwill who seeks to love their neighbor as themselves. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray today for Ukraine, for the people of that country, for the people of Eastern Europe, all who seek safety and fleeing war this very morning. We pray for refugees driven from their communities, for people left behind, for those who mourn death and destruction. We pray today for the end of war and the presence and the coming of peace. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray today this, uh, for Georgia Tucker. Georgia is recovering this week from knee replacement surgery. We pray for a quick and comfortable recovery. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray today for Kathy Cole's brother-in-law, Bob Wilson. He is home from the hospital after receiving care following a brain injury. We pray for Bob's comfort and healing this morning. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. The Beckett family lift up prayers of thanksgiving for ongoing support for uh, Betty beckett Vose, She achieved some positive milestones this week, including completing her chemo chemotherapy treatment, followed by some good test results, as well as approval to remove her back brace. All of these very, very good things for Betty. So we offer ongoing prayers for her healing and comfort this day. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers today for safe travels for Debbie Eckhoff and her daughter, uh, Jamie, who are traveling in London. Prayers for Granger Williams had a stroke on Thursday. We offer prayers for him, uh, for Granger, and for his comfort and his healing today. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for Michelle Wiedemann, uh, daughter-in-law for Anne, as she deals with the effects of long COVID. Pray for her comfort and her healing. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Sal Salvi uh, offer prayers this morning for his grandmother who's been diagnosed with COVID. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for a successful surgery. That's for you, I think, and recovery process. Two prayers there for Salvi, for his grandmother, and for himself. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. We also lift up other names that have been part of our prayer life at the church. Prayers for David Mitchell, for Linda Massoud, for Barb Givens. Prayers for Marsha Morris, for Michael Lyons, for Noreen Curso. Prayers for Betty Price, Betty Slusher, Gloria McDonald, Wendy Nielsen, Francis Dean, Speck Slaughter, Eileen Mitchell, Brenda Beckley, Marjorie Langford, for Richard and Maggie Cooks, 
for Baxter Quinn and family, for Kate Schaefer, for Christopher Cherithbrook, for the people of the Cameroon, and we pray for the Kirk that God will continue to knit us together. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. With these prayers that we have spoken aloud and the prayers that we keep in the silence of our heart, let's turn to God with prayer. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, thank you for your abiding love, your amazing grace, your steadfast care. Thank you for gathering us to be your people, for giving us gifts that help make the world and our lives better through compassion and love. Be with us today as we bring you our prayers for the world. We pray for those around us, O caring God, particularly those who struggle and who suffer this morning, those who are in need today for food and shelter and medical care. We pray for all who mourn, who seek wholeness of spirit and compassion and grace. Comfort us, we pray, with your love and your welcome, and help us to offer your presence to other we, others we encounter every day. We pray for those who seek healing, particularly those who face chronic illness like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, Parkinson's. We pray for your children everywhere who are living with HIV AIDS, those with dementia and their caregivers, everyone who struggles with mental illness and depression. Help us to rest our finite bodies in your boundless and infinite love. We lift up those who seek to mend, those who work for truth and justice, those who search out reconciliation and repair. Help us all find ways to pursue peace, to lift up truth, to protect the vulnerable. We lift up our ongoing struggle against COVID-19, national discord, your call to work to end systemic racism. Help us strive as Jesus did for peace and justice and reconciliation for all. We pray today for the health of our neighbors and our neighborhoods. We mourn gun violence, and we pray for sincere efforts to confront it on our streets, in our homes, in our schools, in our shopping centers. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we, uh, taught us, we pray today for anyone who wishes to do us harm. Guide us, we pray, O Prince of Peace. And we thank you this morning for an opportunity to ground ourselves in this gathering of your faithful people. And we join with so many others around the world who are grateful for your care in our lives. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who shows us how to love because he is the very love of God. And we offer you this prayer in his name as we say together the prayer that he taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite all who wish to stand with me as we sing our final hymn, To God Be the Glory.
I forgot to mention it during the prayer time, but we're grateful for these wonderful flowers who are here uh, dedicated by the Nielsen family in gratitude for the baptism of Olivia. As today we give thanks for these four new baptized children in our community and are grateful to God for the witness of this Kirk and the Church Universal to show love and peace and compassion in the world. Dear friends, God has claimed us, claimed you, claimed me, part of God's community, part of the realm of God. What an amazing and exciting and awesome calling it is. And now we prepare to look ahead to God's new day with purpose, sharing God's love and God's compassion, God's very own agents in the world. As you look around, you'll see other people living into this reality also. So too, for us, this Lord's Day, we proclaim Christ is alive. Something new is afoot. God gives us hope even during times such as this. And so we take... up our work. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help, uh, help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be yours forevermore. Amen? Amen. Amen.